Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us for another edition of Taking Stock Live. As hopefully you know by now, this is really where we take stock with leaders around the globe from retail and consumer goods on what's on their mind, how they're leading, and really how they're thinking about the future of this industry that we all care so much about. Today is a great day. We have an, an incredible leader who I learn from every time I have the opportunity to talk to her. Her name is Sally Gilligan. I believe we actually crossed paths uh, at Gap uh, a, a, a while back for me now. But Sally, first, just huge thank you and welcome. Great to have you today. If you don't mind, let's just start off with letting the audience hear a little bit about yourself and your role. Um, sure, happy to. And Shelly, thank you for having me. Thrilled to be here today. Um, so maybe I'll start a little bit with my role and then I'm happy to go from there. So today um, for Gap Inc, I head up our global tech organization as CIO. And I also wear two hats. I also head up our strategy for Gap Inc, um, which includes our sustainability and government affairs teams as well. Um, and I'm thrilled to have both those roles because they're a really fun complement as we think about where do we want to take the future and how we think about where our customers going and what they care about. Um, and prior to those roles, I spent um, quite a long time in our supply chain and so have a really good perspective on end to end um, of the value chain across our business. So you've really been um, sort of a customer of the technology. You have this really interesting dual of where the strategy and the technology can kind of service each other, which I don't see that often. That's that's incredible. Uh, how how did you really how did you get started in, in retail? <laughs> uh, so I uh, you know also many moons ago, I think I started, um, you know, in high school, my first job was actually um, in apparel in a fabric store. And I loved actually the whole concept of making and designing. And so that's it's been in who I am for a very long time. Um, but actually, I came to retail after I did client service for quite some time, and I think I really wanted to be part of something. I wanted to have the opportunity to not just think about what the right strategy is or what the right implementation was, but to truly own it. And, um, you know, I found my way into our supply chain um, and have just loved it and have really thrived at the ability to have a hands-on impact of building tomorrow and being able to drive the business. And I think if you had asked me uh, many moons ago if I would stay for as long as I have, I probably would have said, I'm not sure. And I have loved every minute of it and have had just an amazing career opportunity um, through the mentors and the opportunity inside the company. Yeah. So it's been, has it been 17 years at, at Gap Inc.? Is that right about that? I'm not supposed to say that out loud, but yes, it has. It's I was there for 16, so we just look really good. <laughs> Um, no, it's been a wonderful 17 years and have just had so much opportunity to really um, take the company through different transformations and, you know, always making sure we're focused on the future. And in particular, most recently in the tech organization to really take us through a fundamental transformation of our stack and where we wanted to go. Um, and Microsoft is a huge partner for us in that. And I think it's really set us up, you know, as we looked at the pandemic, our move to the cloud, our ability to actually respond to the customer moving digitally. All of that was our ability to scale instantaneously, which was a result of that transformation. So it's been, I don't know that I would ever say I would like to relive 2020, but um, it was actually an incredible learning year uh, for us across the board. Yeah, you know, that's really a, cons a consistent theme that we hear is that, as you said, no one wants to relive it. <laughs> but um, some of the lessons learned have been, you know, sometimes a reminder of what we already knew, but the opportunity to accelerate and sometimes we almost didn't know what we were capable of. Um, I know in watching you with your team, you know, one of the things that you're passionate about is your team and, and leading your team. And how have you, how you helped them navigate the the year that you just had in the pandemic? So I think my team's helped me um, just as much as I've helped them to be clear. I always say, you know, you're only as good as your team. And I am super fortunate um, for the folks I work with globally. I think a lot of it is, you know, first, you've just empathy, right? All of us have had to open the, the curtain on our life, right? There's little separation between work and home and making sure um, that you acknowledge that. And, you know, in particular, as a leader, making sure you're that role model. And I think just flexibility, as you well know, we work globally, um, you know, for tech, that often means 24-7, someone's available. And just having that empathy of what people are, are managing, um, you know, many people had small kids at home, particularly women had 
were highly impacted. Um, in some cases, you know, teams were in locations where the infrastructure wasn't great and they didn't have the right access. And so just making sure you're aware of that and what you're asking of folks, um, because we found our teams were actually really highly productive and I'm not sure that's sustainable. And so really encouraging people to take a break. Uh, be thoughtful about how they draw those separations. And um, it's really tempting when your laptop's always at home, always available, um, but it's also not sustainable and it's also not the right thing um, for your balance with your family as well. Yeah, I, I, I love what you said about kind of opening up the curtain um, because um, I think we share, I know, I, you know, the passion for, for women and, and supporting women. And, you know, in the early days of the pandemic, I had so many people that were sort of apologizing for kids coming in. And, I, you know, I, it was actually my favorite part of the day. Um, and so I think celebrating, you know, sort of the whole person um, has been one of the the silver linings of, of what we've been through as leaders and how we help younger women also celebrate all the things that they have going on um, sort of in the background. How about as, um, as a CIO? Because that's, you know, obviously, you know, you've got you it, technically this has been um, a challenging time. Um, and, and how do you think about managing sort of the technical strategy as you're navigating a pandemic? No, it's been, um, and I think it's been incredible for the teams across the board. I will also say we also learn the muscle of what we're capable of, right? Like careful where you where you draw the line versus where you can push yourself. Um, and I'll just start with, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, when we took global teams, you know, Gap Inc. has 140,000 employees, um, you know, remote overnight. That was only feasible based on the modernization our teams had gone through um, and the productivity tools that we had chosen to adopt and making sure that folks could do their jobs and what that looked like. There was also a lot of innovation. You know, we looked at a lot of how do you do whiteboarding remotely? How do you do solutioning um, ideation, um, both in our physical design of our product as well as in, you know, a technical design of our product. And so a lot of just on the spot having to solution of what does that look like differently? Um, so that was first and foremost, can everyone do their job? And is everyone safe and secure? So we also rolled out a lot of technology to help what we call our safe retailing practices um, as our stores operated um, under different government regulations. We did quite a lot of partnering to make sure that we were promoting safe retailing. That meant being able to tell how many people were in your stores or being able to make sure that you had contactless payment. Um, and the speed at which we brought those things to market is what I'm most proud of with the team. Um, in many cases, it was two week iterations and we were deploying something live and learning from it. Um, we did the same with curbside pickup. Normally that would have been two years on our roadmap. We would have built into it. We built into it in four weeks. Um, that is what I get excited about. Um, and all that's the potential of the teams. I think we learned a lot. It's not just the what, it's the how. Um, really getting out of the way. How do you empower people to make decisions? How do you, how do you make it okay for it not to be perfect? I think that was a huge cultural learning for us and giving folks the space to make those types of trade-offs and choices. Um, and I think that is a wonderful part of our learning journey as we went through the pandemic and something that I hope that we don't um, dissipate or that we uh, make sure that we maintain as we build the momentum forward. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, the the speed and the agility, to your point of sort of what what, what you're truly capable of, um, and you're an incredibly modest person. And in many ways, you you laid those tracks and you create the the digitally from a technical perspective early because you had that vision. But you also have empowered your teams um, that it's okay not to be perfect, but to but to test and learn into it. So I'll, I'll say that for you because I know you won't say that for yourself. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? How about how about what surprised you the most? Uh, I think a couple of things, um, you know, and for us in operating retail stores and for many, um, you know, folks that I'm sure that are joining us today, you know, we went through a 60 day period where, you know, across different countries, you were closing down your stores, then you were reopening your stores. Then here in this country, we had, you know, really big protests that impacted were such an important topic and so intrinsic to who we are as a company, but also really required us to pivot again on how we operated our stores. And so I share that because that was one thing that I really learned was the muscle to be able to make decisions quickly, to pivot and allow teams to execute was so important. And you really got down to the what matters, who should be involved in really having to orchestrate that execution 
um, was really, really important. And we learned if you give people clear direction and empower them, they will go get it done. We have incredible team members and leaders. And that sounds so simple. You say that out loud and you're like, shouldn't that be the case all the time? But the truth is, in a big organization, it gets complex fast. Um, no in, ill intention. There's just a lot of people that are involved in many things. And so I think that simplification of focus and empowerment so important. I think the other one that I love is just give people the problem and let them go innovate. Like I the challenge to say to folks, we need something in two weeks. Uh, these are the, this is the tool set. No constraints. Go do it. And to watch teams do it and to watch the momentum they built with each other in the support of each other. And like, frankly, I mean, if you had asked me to sign up at the beginning of 20 and what we actually delivered in that year, I would have looked at you and said, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, to watch the teams do it and have an incredibly successful, not just navigating the pandemic. Um, we were very fortunate. We had a very successful peak. And for us, that was the first season we ran um, all of our stores in all of our um, front end e-commerce site um, in the cloud. And so in a year where we normally would have been very nervous about watching that pivot, it was really fun to watch that um, scaling and momentum. And on top of it, our online business had grown tremendously with uh, you know, consumer behavior and the shifts in the consumer behavior during the pandemic. So you would have never asked for all of that to um, line up at the same time. But I think it really taught resilience, um, to say it very um, succinctly and innovation and empowerment, um, all powerful lessons as a leader that you know, but really to watch them in play is incredible. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the principles that you just unpacked around sort of simplification and give people the problem, you know, those are, to your point, things that are intuitive <laughs> to you, but the, the, so important. And I have to say on the Microsoft side, you know, ha watching our engineers have the sort of Black Friday peak jitters <laughs> that a retailer would have was was so fun because, you know, um, you never know until you know. And it was um, amazing to see what the what the collaboration could be and could do and, and to let let the let a tech company real really feel like what it looks like to be in support and in service of a retailer. Well, and I will say this too, Shelley, to that point, I think the other lesson we learned is you can't do it alone. So how do you use your partners? You're in it together. And I think that what you just talked about is so important because when you're in those moments, that's when you need your partners and you make each other better when you work simultaneous towards the same thing. Um, and that was really important with everyone um, that supported us through last year. Good. Well, that's that that it, you're we we always aspire to be that, um, but I think we have to walk in the shoes to really understand it. Um, as, as you think about sort of forward investments, because in some ways some of the work we're doing together has been laying the foundation for your future vision. What kinds of technologies are you thinking about to make sure you're kind of keeping pace with with this opportunity around around where the consumer's going? I think that is the most um, exciting, and if I had to be honest, partially terrifying thing <laughs> coming mm -hmm. out of the momentum from the pandemic is I think the pace of change. You've often heard um, quoted, I think many people have said the innovation was accelerated three years. And I don't see that pace slowing down either, right? Once folks have a taste of that, how do you keep up with it? And so what I get really excited about, though, and this is also the fun part of the job, is I think that we're scratching the surface on what data can do and what that means from a personalized shopping experience and how that enables the customer to truly shop you know, where she wants to, when she wants to. And we all talk about the omnivision, but really watching the breakthroughs in ML and AI and how data moves come through really starts to make that real. Um, and uh, that is really exciting to me. It's a fun space. It's a space where there's many um, great players, a lot of breakthrough, but it's also not a space where it's been fully stitched together or fully discovered yet. Um, so I get very, very excited about that. Um, and I also watch, I think there's a large conversation on um, privacy and how you think about that in respecting your customer. And I think that's going to continue to really um, be a requirement of all CIOs and how you think about the technology solutions around that as well. I agree. And I think that the intersection of personalization and privacy, I mean, you know, the more you deliver, and I learned this in my early days at the Gap where, you know, the more you deliver personalized experiences, the more co the consumer will raise their hand and say, I'm willing to participate and give you my data. And that, that handshake, if you will, between the two is so important. And 
you know, the more time I set, spend now in the tech world, the more I see retail is actually comparing my peers in healthcare or financial services, really on the on the front tip of the spear in terms of showing the world what that intersection of personalization really looks like. So that makes me really, really proud. As you think about, um, I, you know, sort of, I went from being a, in a industry of retail where there are a lot of senior women um, to now an industry where, frankly, there aren't as many senior women in the rooms I'm in. I know you care a lot about mentoring women and the intersection of retail and technology. Um, you know, what advice would you give um, women coming up in the ranks and wanting to be a, you know, CIO of a major, major retailer someday? Uh, so I will start with, I always tread lightly on advice, but I will, I will share this. Um, the first and foremost, um, you can do it and you should just assume that you can and that the opportunity is there. Um, but what does that look like? I mean, I think it, I'm as a leader, very, very passionate about the diversity of thought. When you think about fundamentally, what do we all do in technology? We solve problems that are everyday part of our human experience and how we bring solutions to bear on that. You can't do that if you have half the voices missing around the table, around what those experiences look like and how we live our lives. And so I think the thing I would say is you do have a seat at the table and make sure you fill it and make sure that you continue to um, mentor others. I think it's a symbiotic relationship to role modeling. And I always talk to you around there's mentorship and there's sponsorship, and they're two very important things. And, you know, for mentorship, it's personal. Um, each person's journey is different. You have to decide what you want. I've had incredible mentors. And by the way, some of those mentors have been both female and male and have always had great sponsorship. And for me, sponsorship and the difference with mentorship is really how do you navigate your organization and how do you understand your organization? And I think it's important um, for females to make sure they have both um, and that they seek them out. Um, for me, mentorship is a little more um, personal and that you want that person that I always say is going to hold up the mirror, is going to maybe tell you what you don't want to hear <laughs> or help you unpack what you need to hear. Um, but both are so important um, for your career journey and actually a really fun part of your career journey. Every time I've taken a risk um, in my career, it's because someone I've really respected that's invested in me has taken the time to sort of push me out of my comfort zone. Um, and I think we all need that in our lives. Yeah, we do. And um, I, I, the, our, the our difference between mentorship and sponsorship is a really interesting, we could do an, a whole episode on just that. <laughs> Talk a little bit about people who have mentored you. And you said men and women and, and sort of what roles they've played for you. That's incredible. I, uh, you know, I've always been very fortunate and um, that many of the folks, sometimes they've been my manager, sometimes they've been folks I've worked with who I've stayed in touch with. Um, you know, I started my career in client service and always had the pleasure of working with people that, you know, pushed me and sort of said, what do you want to do and how do you think about that? Um, you know, in particular, I always think of one mentor I had when I first had my son, um, you know, and I came back from maternity leave and I was going to do it all. I was going to do it all at the same speed. And I remember, um, you know, he said to me, you can do it all, just not at the same time and perhaps not on your terms. <laughs> and um, I remember it so saliently. And actually, I was just, um, you know, corresponding with him. And it's been 25, you know, plus years that we've known each other. Um, and it was probably some of the best advice I got because it really what he was teaching me is to give myself permission um, to have different speeds, to have the ability to lean in to sometimes that's your personal life, sometimes that's your family, sometimes it's your professional life. But you can't hold yourself to the standard of all of it, all of the time. Uh, perfect. And I actually think that's the best thing a mentor can do is to give you room to learn and also give you room to discover who you are and what matters um, to you. Yeah. And also, as you said, um, you know, put kind of put the mirror in front of you in terms of wh who you really are versus who you think or who you think you are, who, who you want to be. Call. Yeah. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think, um, you know, those who especially shine the light for me when I became a mom. Like, you know, because people always, I'm sure they ask you, like, how do you, how do you find balance? I'm like, I don't find balance. <laughs> I find, I balance, balance know, is very personal too. I always say that. I find moments, yeah, where, uh, you know, I'm better. I, but someone said to me, um, you're going to feel like you're a terrible employee and a terrible mom. So just be ready for that. <laughs> and that really, that actually gave me.
me peace in a weird way. Thank you. As we sort of wrap up, Sally, um, as you think about yourself professionally or the ambition that you have for Gap Inc., uh, what, what's, what's in store for you as we, as we look at the rest of 2021? So I think, um, first I'll just say uh, for the company, I couldn't be more thrilled to be part of Gap Inc. I think what we stand for from our purpose, values, and behavior, the potential we have on our purpose-driven brands, I'm so excited. And the momentum we have with our digital platforms coming out of the pandemic and forward, it's a really fun time um, to be part of this team. Um, and I'm actually just excited for the retail industry in general. I think there's been a lot of um, fundamental shifts. I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think the consumer, um, is going to be excited to re-engage as we all start to, you know, it's hard to say, go back to what we did. I think we would never will. I think it'll be fundamental changes in how we live our lives. Um, and that's a really fun part to be something to get to participate in is what I'm excited about. So. Absolutely. Well, both for Gap Inc. and for the industry, um, it's it's a really an incredible moment. And uh as I watch you and our partnership, um, I'm just so proud to be part of what you're leading because um, you have an incredible way and your brands have an incredible way of connecting with people. And at the end of the day, I think that is always what the core of this industry has been about, certainly the retail industry. So huge thanks for making time today. I know you're, you're a busy person. and oh, well, Likewise, it's always wonderful to have a chance to chat with you, Shelley. Um, and really do appreciate, I can't tell you the partnership has been amazing and has been part of our acceleration. Well, my favorite thing on that though, Sally, is that when I do get the chance to talk to you, you talk about the people at Microsoft, <clears throat> our team, and you know, frankly, like, you know, junior members of the team who are so passionate about Gap. Um, and that, yeah, like great. that, it's not us who, it's like those people who are working it every single day. That makes me they, really proud. Who, that is who's solving our problems and that's who's making us better. And I love that. Me too. Me too. Well, thank you. Um, really huge thanks. And for all of you who tuned in today, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're really just loving what we're seeing, the community that we're creating, the ideas that you're bringing to us. So keep Keep commenting, um, keep participating, and we can't wait to bring you another edition of Taking Stock Live. So thank you. Hey.